Memorial Day weekend is usually the time when we think of as the beginning of summer. I don't know about you, but I've done a lot of reflecting lately about plans that I made last winter about all the things I was going to be doing this spring and this summer, and those things have not happened because of COVID-19. One by one, I've seen those things melt away off of my calendar. Birthday parties, graduation parties, family gatherings, uh, wedding receptions, all those things that change. And around the church, we've noticed that those plans that we worked so hard on, uh, that would be uh, discipleship experiences, worship experiences, mission experiences, they just disappeared off of the calendar. Someone said that humans make plans and God laughs. That's true, you know. God probably looks down on us and wonders why we presume that we're always in charge of our calendars. James says it differently in the fourth chapter of that epistle. He says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance all such boasting is evil. We have this habit of being addicted to our routine, to our plans. We like to think we're in charge, but I think scripture is inviting us to trade some of our sense of entitlement for some gratitude. Instead of feeling entitled that tomorrow is my right, to be grateful for each day and for each breath that we draw. And to trade our arrogance, the presumption that we're in charge for some trust. If the Lord wills, we will do this or that. God's will is the safest place to be in all the world. In fact, we're taught in the Lord's Prayer to ask for God's will to be done. Years ago, there was a Presbyterian pastor by the name of Peter Marshall. He was excited because he was invited to preach the worship service at the U.S. Naval Academy. He was looking forward to preaching to the midshipmen and he worked on his sermon, he planned and he prepared. But then right before he was to preach, he felt a strange prompting from the Holy Spirit to change his text. He ended up preaching on that passage from James chapter four. And on December 7th, 1941, Peter Marshall preached on that text, not knowing that the bombing of Pearl Harbor had taken place earlier that day and thousands had died. What is our life? What is our life? It's a vapor. It's here for a few moments and then it's gone. What is our life? It's a mist. Life is fragile. Handle with prayer. God bless you and have a good day.